Hey, what's going on? My name is Bim. This is a typical DualSense controller. And last night as I was playing Outriders, which is a pretty fun game, I noticed that my right trigger or my R2 uh, became super sensitive. Like at the slightest pressure, it would go off. Like you would, st I would start firing randomly. And I noticed that the L2 had way more resistance than my really flimsy feeling r2 which wasn't always the case so this is most likely a case of the this kind of spring breaking inside the controller and it's a common issue with dual sense controllers um so today we're gonna attempt to open this and fix it and if i can we're gonna try to replace some buttons I'm not sure if it'll work, but let's go. As for the parts you'll be needing, uh, you'll be needing this plastic separator. to use it to pry apart plastic parts. You'll also need a Phillips head screwdriver, a small one, the same one if you've done it for the Dual Shock 4, you'll probably need the same size, and a replacement spring. You could get a bunch of springs uh, from Shopee or Lazada or Amazon. They are cheap. They go for like under $2. Okay, step one. Take your separator and then just try to find a little opening here because you're gonna you want to remove you'll need to remove this part to expose um, the screws within the the controller for this bottom part. So that's your first step. You just find a little opening and you pry it open. See, it's just a clip. It you see that? Uh, I guess my macro isn't that good, uh, but it's just, it really is just a clip, it clips into the controller like so. And then you do it for the other end. Be very, very gentle because you don't want to break that clip. And there you go. You can take the same uh, separator and just go under here and try to get it off. Be very gentle. Okay. So there are a lot of small teeth, see, that go into the plastic. So you just have to make sure that they're all off. And then instead of pulling it outward, you kind of have to pull it um, up and out that way because there are these bat ears that go into that space and you put that aside. Step two is to take off the R1 and L1 buttons to expose even more screws. And to do that, again, you use this thing and you just lose him. No, don't lose him. You pop him off. Um, see, it's just a clip again. And then there's your third and fourth screw. And you do it the same to the other side. Try not to lose this one. There you go. Once you've popped those plastic parts off, it's time to unscrew things. It would be very helpful if you had magnetic screwdrivers. Come on, man. When you're done with the bottom two, you go up here. Once you've gotten the screws off, there are two clips here and you can use the peeling tool to just unclip both of them. After that, take your plastic peeling tool. I really need to know what this thing is called and just run, run it ar around um, the edge like so until it separates like that. Do the same on the other end. So once you've gone around and pried open all of this, you can just open it like a, like a, sort of like a clam. You don't pull it straight up this way. You kind of, this is like the pivot point. You open it like so, and this is just like a, like an entire assembly. This is the back. Okay. So I found out what happened to our, our R2. If you look closely here, you can still see, actually, I'll try to remove the battery. I removed the battery so, you know, you could see it better, but the 
the spring on the L2 is still there intact. And on the R2, I actually, I found a piece of it. I right, broke off and there's more spring somewhere inside the controller that I can't find. Now all you have to do is to take the spring and because there's a little um, a divot that you could put the arm in and a little hook that you put the spring into and you just make sure that the divot inside the trigger itself catches the other arm of the spring there that's a better view of it i actually lost a couple of these just because i kept testing it and they would spring out so i guess this is a good test make sure they don't spring out you know since we're already here i might as well try to explore a little bit i've already removed the bat the screw for the battery tray now i'll just have to remove the microphone Pop bad, try not to lose it. And then we should be able to pull, yeah, the battery tray off. Okay, next you wanna remove these two ribbons here. This other ribbon, you just remove. Come on, man. Okay, there you go. And then this front facing microphone and the touchpad. This always gave me problems with a DualShock 4. I don't know if it'll give me trouble. Ah, cool. Okay, now that all those ribbons are off, well, actually, I think, yeah, no, that should be fine. We should be able to, yeah, baby, and then just peel this back. You can see the screws, and we go to town on those guys. These two screws here, the silver ones, they are a little longer than the others. And then once you have all those four screws off, you should be able to, yeah, just take the whole thing. If my guess is correct, the molds for these guys are the same as the molds for, they're not. They're very slightly different. Is the D-pad the same? Oh, D-pad's the same at least. Yeah, D-pad's the same. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make them fit. I'm gonna make them fit, hold on. So, only do this if you're kind of insane. <laughs> or if you don't value your property. So the only, <laughs> the only two teeth, or the only tooth actually, that isn't aligning is that one right there. That one right there. You see it? That's this is the only tooth that isn't aligning. The rest are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take. So that abrupt stop was because uh, my SD card filled out, and I had actually already completed the project before I realized that nothing got recorded. But it's it's like a day later, so I've already been able to test it out. I can tell you what I did. So as you saw, the teeth on each button don't exactly line up with the openings on the shell. So what you can do, and this is what I did was, I looked for the differences. So as long as there isn't anything that will prevent the button from falling in the hole, then you're golden. For each button, there's just one tooth that separates the DualShock 4 from the dual sense controller for the triangle button i think it's it's this tooth it's that one i, I chopped that off uh, and i used the nail cutter you should use a like something like a like pl pliers and uh sandpaper to make sure that there's less friction going in and out um so there's one different tooth each button except for the x button for the x button they're identical and it just went in perfectly, no problem. See, identical buttons. And this is what it en eventually ended up looking like. So this is the finished product. And it looks great. I think it looks way better than the all white button layout of the original DualSense. The D-pad is the same mold, so that just fits in properly. 
the buttons are not the same mold as evidenced by the teeth and the actual slant of the button. Now, if you look at the circle button, it actually has a bit of a slant. And that makes it so the, the profile of the buttons kind of follow the nice sleekness of, of the dual sense. But when you're using it, it works fine. I played Outriders, I played Marvel um, for a few good, you know, three, four hours last night, and it worked perfectly. You wouldn't notice a difference. However, the R2 fix using a dual shock four spring is extremely disappointing. So while yes, you can use uh, a dual shock four spring to replace this spring in a pinch it still isn't as good as you know the the dual sense specific spring it's still a hair trigger there is more resistance and it feels better than if you didn't do it but it's still way more flimsy than the l2 and it's still a hair trigger the slightest slightest pressure sets it off and that's no good so what i did was i ordered some replacement springs off of Lazada. I'm sure you could get it off Shopee, Amazon, or whatever. Uh, whatever your you know, most convenient. AliExpress probably also has it. So whatever is most convenient for you, I'm sure they have it. Like two stores from Indonesia had it and I'm having them shipped. So once those come in, I'll probably repeat this video. I'll show you how to install that, which is exactly the same process. But I also got myself new um, face plates and we'll try those out. So until next time, this has been BIM. I hope you found this video informative, at least entertaining. I hope um, leave a like. If you like the video, leave a comment. Just say whatever. Tell me I suck or whatever. That would be great. That helps the algorithm quite a bit. Uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.